Good morning and welcome to Ruzel Live. Today is Monday, October 3rd, 2022. My name is Nicholas Giberson with Ruzel Education. Today, live all the way from Costa Mesa, California, is Ambassador Taylor Hair Nandez. Take it away, Taylor. <laughs> Taylor Hair Nandez. Thank you, Nicholas. Um, my name is Taylor. Um, I'm coming from Orange County, California, Southern California. It is morning time for me right now. So um, thank you guys for tuning in on a Monday. I have my model George here. Um, as you can see, he's got like tons of length that we can play with. And uh, he's got some great texture off as well. Um, he's a musician, so he likes to um, kind of not wear his hair so perfect. He, he likes to let his freak flag fly, if you will, right? So he likes to headbang and stuff. So today i'm excited because i'm going to create a mullet shape on him today so i think the mullet gets a really bad rap because i think people like uh like their minds go to like joe dirt right so um i think the difference between like a classic like joe dirt mullet like that and the difference between like a modern day mullet is a lot of the the weight in the interior is gone so i'm going to use um, our techniques that we use here and I'm going to create a nice square, like layered shape in the back just to reduce some of that uh, weight in the interior of the head. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to drop them in the comments and uh, we'll get to them. All right. So um, the first thing I did today was I, I uh, saturated his hair evenly all the way around. And if you'll notice, I have the uh, blue hair tonic in here. And I love starting the hair service off with the blue hair tonic. It's amazing. And it's amazing for me and for the client because it just starts that service off with an experience. They're getting that smell. Um, the, I really love the smell of the uh, hair tonic because it encompasses like that barbershop feel. And if, this is also going to help me give like a good cutting lotion. It's going to allow me to take clean sections, right? So before I set in my primary parting which i i uh separated the bottom half of the head from the top half of the head i kind of examined his hair i looked at his density i looked at the thickness i looked at the texture of his hair i'm looking at the growth patterns um i'm checking at growth patterns at the the uh, crown there oftentimes the cowlick so i'm just determining whether his hair can support the style that i want to give him and um yeah i'm excited to give him this mullet there's so much hair to cut off here. So um, I'm just going to make sure this is evenly saturated here. So if you notice, I separated the top half of the head from the bottom half. And he's got a nice little um, partings there. Nice and even all the way around. I really want to make sure this primary parting is even. Because my baseline is going to live right below that primary parting. And it, it's going to live right at the round of the head. Okay. So a couple of different ways how I find the round of the head when I'm, when I'm sectioning this part is I'll set my comb on the head and right where it starts to rock is typically right where that rounded head or right at that recession, or you could even go as far as taking your, like, like a comb, setting it on the crown of the head, setting it at the widest point of the head and right at that, uh, that's a 90 degree angle. So at that 45 degree angle, will that round of the head will live. Okay. So like I said, you've seen, a, 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 if you've seen a Ruzel video, you've heard us talk about the baseline and the baseline, you'll hear us talk really highly of it. That's because it's the foundation of all of our haircuts, right? So starting in the interior of the hair is going to act as a foundation that's going to act as a safety net. So establishing that length at the round of the head, as opposed to working from the bottom up, you know, we'll at once we set that baseline and we're able to determine the length underneath and then the baseline will help support the hair on top. You know, like a lot of times barbers will start from the bottom up and there's nothing wrong with that. Um, I think that if you're like just getting in the game, when you're starting from the bottom up, you tend to push that fade higher and higher and higher where that baseline is just, when you set that in, in the beginning and then it's set in for the rest and it's just gonna act as that safety net for us. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is set in my baseline. So, oh God, my shoes. 
So obviously a mullet shape, it's a lot tighter on the sides than it is on the back. We got to, we're gonna play with some length in the back. So I'm gonna set in my baseline a little differently than what we're normally gonna do, but I'm gonna start out just the same. So I'm gonna come in, I'm bringing all this hair up to my baseline. I'm making sure this hair is coming out, that baseline is coming out tabletop section. I'm making sure that hair is parallel to the floor. I wanna envision a marble resting on that, uh, that hair and I don't want it to roll off. Okay, so I'm gonna set in that baseline. And I'm starting at just behind the ear, just because that's the widest point of the head. And I really want to maintain that square profile from the front. So I want to maintain that square profile. So if I came in here, you know, that, that uh, squareness might be taken away. So I'm going to continue this baseline all the way to the front. I want to make sure that this is the, you can go over this baseline part as many times as you want, just to figure out the, the length that you want to do. I think this is going to be good right here. Okay. So I got that front baseline set in. Now this is where it starts to get a little different. Um, I'm going to continue on my, my baseline, but I'm not going to follow my baseline around the head just yet. Okay. So I'm going to work on, I'm going to work on creating this square shape just past the round of the head. Okay. So if you want to come over here and get this, you'll notice from the top point of view that once I'm, I'm, I'm still creating this, this wall shape on this side, and you'll notice that once we get past that round of the head, that all this hair in here is starting to be over-directed to this wall right here. And I'm, when I'm over-directing hair, I'm creating length. Okay, so I'm just gonna continue this on. I'll probably take in maybe like one more section just so I can get some extra length in the back. All right, so you can see that I'm bringing everything, everything just past the round of the head. So you can see this hair is now longer than this hair and that encompasses the mullet. I wanna create a little longer shape when it comes to the back area, okay? So now I'm gonna take this length and start to round, follow that to center back here. So, so I'm gonna come in And now I'll start to follow that round of the head with my longer length that I've created by over directing it. Okay. And I'm going to work just past center back here. Now, just to recap, okay. Um, if you want to come over here, um, we just set in our baseline, right? So I took everything out nice and square and I took it past that round of the head. You'll notice that all this hair is being over directed. So now I have this length that I wanted to create in the back. So now I followed this length and followed it back to center back. So that's how I created some length in the back with my baseline. It's a little different than what we're normally do. Um, but this is how I would create my mullet in the back here. Okay. So now I'm going to, Make sure this is evenly saturated. I don't want anything to dry up on me because I want to keep this cut consistent. Okay. I'm going to pump them up about chest level because I want to be comfortable when I'm cutting here. Comb all this down. So now, uh, if, we're, if, if this was like the Vanguard, we would want to like, uh, tilt our fingers about a 45 in towards the head because we would want to uh, hug it towards the head and like hug it tighter. With this shape, I want to keep a nice square shape. So I'm taking all this hair parallel to the floor. I'm not going to angle my fingers in it. My fingertips should be pointing straight to the ceiling. So now that I have my baseline as my guide, 
I'll come in. I have my, my baseline right there. My fingers are pointed straight to the ceiling and I'm just gonna create a nice square shape. All this hair is coming out parallel to the floor, okay? All right, I'll move to my next section. I'm taking about half inch subsections. Um, with these half inch subsections, um, it's really gonna create some texture, right? I don't really wanna go any more than half inch subsections because then we'll start to get bulkiness. So if I take this hair out, I should have some slight corrugation when I'm establishing the shape of shears, right? So when I'm taking when I'm taking half inch subsections, I should get a straight line, but a little bit of corrugation, right? With that line, and that's going to create texture. If I start to create, um, take it like maybe like an inch sections, that's when it starts to get nice and clumpy. It starts to look like this, and that's going to create like clumpiness in the haircut. And that's what we don't want. So half inch sub sections are gonna be good. I can't say subsections. All right, so nice and clean partings. I'm gonna tilt his head right where I need it. And again, my fingertips are pointing straight to the ceiling. I have my baseline there. And I'm gonna start to create that shape there. Okay, and then I'll move on. Now my, my uh, sections are starting to get a little longer from that over directions that I created with my baseline. So we're gonna start to see some length in the back here, which is perfect. And again, keeping that, that section nice and square, parallel to the floor. So if you think about it, you know, with me cutting these sections nice and square. So all this hair is, I'm taking all this hair parallel, parallel to the floor, right? So when it falls, all this stuff down here is gonna give me my mullet, right? And, but all this weight in through here is kind of reduced, which, which I think that's what separates um, a classic mullet to like a modern mullet. Okay, so I'll take in my other half inch section here. I'll tilt his head right there. I'm pulling this hair straight off from the scalp. I'm gonna find my baseline. My baseline. And I'll continue that shape. All the way down. Until I run out of hair. So when I get to the back, you can see that length picking up on the, on, the, on the bottom there. So when I get to the back here, obviously I can't hold on to all this hair all at once. So I'm not, I'm not gonna attempt to grab this entire section all in one go. I'm gonna break it up. So I'll only hold on to what I can grab. So I see my baseline. I'm gonna have my, I'm, I have my checklist. I'm standing right in front of my section. I'm making sure my fingertips are pointing straight to the ceiling. Um, that hair is coming straight off the head, parallel to the floor. And I'm just gonna work with the hair that I can handle. And work all the way down until I run out of hair here. And if I hold this up, you can see that it's nice and square and as it falls we get some length into there. So I'm just about at the midpoint of the head. I'm gonna work just past center back, just so when I connect in from this side, it's gonna be a lot easier. So I'm gonna do one more section just past center back. I find, I find that that's the uh, easiest way to connect from the other side. Okay, so I've got my baseline, making sure that fingertips are pointed up, 
working all the way through. I'm checking in the back just to see my, my guide in the back and then making sure I'm connecting my baseline. If I don't see a guide or my baseline, I'm not gonna cut. So you can see already from a side profile, it's a little shorter and I'm gonna detail all this um, in the detailing, but we have a little mullet going on already, right? So now that I've established my right side, I'm gonna go to my, uh, my left side. And the left side is always, uh, I find my non-dominant side is always a little harder to do than my dominant side. I think a lot of people find that as well. So my best advice when establishing a shape or if you're like new to doing, um, doing this, I would recommend just slowing it down. You know, just, you know, make sure you're following the steps, have a checklist in your head as you're going through this. And, um, eventually it'll start to come natural. Um, that's what, that's what I did. I cut as many doll heads as I could cause this side always gave me issues. I always felt really awkward, but you know, practice makes perfect. And then eventually it just becomes second nature. So I want to make sure that my baseline is the same on this side that it is on this side. So I'm just going to kind of double check the length over here, kind of see where I'm at. You can measure it with your comb. Okay. So again, I'm going to do the same exact thing. I'm going to pull all this hair up. I'm starting right behind the ear because that's where the mastoid is, the widest point of the head, right? Okay, I'm going to pull all this hair up. And if you're unsure or sketched out, like you're going to cut it too short, start longer, you know? Start longer and then you could double check and um, go from there. Because once you do cut it too short, it's over, right? And then you got to take the other side too short. So I recommend if you're unsure, just, just start longer. When in doubt, start longer and you could dial it in. So now I'm moving this baseline to that front hairline, still maintaining that square shape. Now I think I might have gone a little longer, which is fine, right? I'm just going to double check from check for some symmetry. That actually looks pretty good. I might even take it in just a tad tighter here. Just a tiny bit. And that's okay. You know, you, you really want to take your time on this baseline and making sure that it's in and it's even all the way around to the head. Because if it's not, if it's off on this side, it's going to be off on top and on the bottom too. So we really want to just take our time, make sure we're getting and setting in our baseline. Okay. So I'm going to follow this, start to follow this baseline back now. Making sure it's nice and clean before I continue on. All right. So remember, we did it a little different this time, right? We're going to start to still create this wall. We're not going to follow around the head just yet. I want to create some length. So I'm going to still create this wall over here. I'm going to bring everything over here. And you can see that hair being over directed to this, this wall that I'm creating and attach that to my baseline there. sure I'm nice and even. Making sure I'm coming out tabletop sections. Remember, I want to envision that marble resting on there. Okay, so I'll double check here. I just want to make sure I'm following this baseline. So now I have my longer length here that I created. Now I'm going to follow this length and connect it to that this length in the back here. Okay, so coming around. Got that tabletop section. Following this length through the back. Okay. 
making sure that baseline's really set in. Okay, awesome. So now I have my baseline established around the entire head now. So now I just wanna establish that length underneath, okay? A lot of people ask me like, how, how short do you know to go like in, on this front part? And that's a great question. Um, that's really up to me and my patron, right? So I like to call this area the sign, seal, and deliver area, right? So once I establish a length, you know, I'll, I'll maybe if I'm, we're unsure, we'll start longer and I'll check in with George, like, hey, is this a good length? And he'll give me the okay and then I can move on. Um, so it's just really up to you and your patron, okay? It's always good to have that continued consultation throughout the haircut, just to check in with your patron, make sure you guys are on the same page. Cause there's nothing worse than like finishing the haircut. And then he's like, can you go a little shorter? Um, if you cut hair, we've all been there. And that is not a good feeling to have. I think we all can agree on that. Okay, so I, I'm making sure that this hair is evenly saturated. I'm going to adjust them. I'm going to lower them just a tad. So instead of coming in with my, my palms up, I'm going to come in with my fingertips down and start to create my shape. I'm still creating that nice square shape. I'm going to follow that all the way through the bottom. Nice and square. I'm pulling all that hair parallel to the floor. Pulling that out straight off the scalp, parallel to the floor, standing right in front of my section, only working with the hair that I can control in my fingers, cutting to just that second knuckle, right? Um, one, because I don't want to chop my knuckle off or cut my hand. And also, too, we start to lose that tension past that second knuckle. So I want to maintain that nice, solid shape. So just working in small, controlled sections here. So pulling that out nice and square. And I'm going to continue this on through the bottom. Okay, take this section, work this out. And working that all the way through until I run out of hair. Okay, and then I'll move to my next sections where it's my next section start to get a little longer from that over direction I created with my baseline. Okay, making sure I'm coming straight off. I got my fingers pointing straight to the ground. And I'm gonna work all the way down until I run out of hair. Now mullets don't have to be so aggressive, you know? There definitely are, like, I think when you think of a mullet, I think automatically your brain just goes to, like, the most insane aggressive mullet you've ever seen. But I find that having a little length in the back, back to play with is a lot of fun. Um, and it just kind of adds character, you know? Um, I always tell my clients once they leave my chair with a mullet, like, it gives them this, like, weird sense of confidence that you can just, like, it gives you, like, this special power, mullet powers, I call it. Okay, so I'll move this all the way through. If you have any questions, please feel free to ask. Um, the more engaged, the better, you know? If you have a question, ask. Working that all the way through. So I got a couple more sections here. I'm gonna boost them up just a tad on this back part. I'm gonna tilt his head down a little bit. I'm gonna finish this off. So my baseline, keeping those fingers nice and square, taking all that hair parallel to the floor and then working my way down here. Yeah. 
and just working all the way through. You can see that length starting to build. I think I have like one more section here. Find my baseline, making sure I'm taking that hair parallel to the floor all the way down, only working with the hair that I can handle. I think I have this little piece of hair. I'm just gonna double check it real quick. Baseline. Just work that all the way down till I have no more hair. This should be my last section here. So let's check it out. Okay, so now we have all this cool length right here, right? And then we can see from a profile, it gets a little shorter. We can detail that in at the end. You can see that side's a little shorter. He's getting a little length through here. All right. Hey, Taylor. So, yeah, what's up? Just as you said the word detailing, one of our viewers from YouTube was asking for tips on detailing with scissors on this kind of haircut. Awesome. So right now, I'm, I'm just setting in my mullet sketch everything i'm doing um until i i blow dry it is going to be just a sketch all that detailing is going to come when i'm uh, done blow drying and i can see my shape kind of come to life a little more once you blow dry the hair you tend to see all the heaviness the where it needs to be taken out so i'm going to wait for all the detailing part and i will definitely get there i promise you okay and i'll show you guys how i would kind of detail my my mullet here Definitely I'm going to like take this in a little bit, maybe thinking about maybe doing a little bit of scalp exposure just to like make that mullet pop. Right. So, but I'm going to transition to the top before I get to any detailing. So I established my sketch on the bottom. Right. And now I'm going to establish my length on the top. Okay. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to, if you want to come in close to here, I can see his hairline right here, right? So I want to continue this, this hairline upwards into the hair. And I'm going to push this stuff down, push this forward. So now I have, I want to create a little triangle right here. So this is one side of my triangle. I'll do the same thing on the other side. I'll come in, I'll find his hairline. You can see his hairline right there. It's kind of going like this. So I'll just follow this and connect it to that other side of my triangle. Okay. So now if you look, you should have a nice triangle right there. Okay. So the reason why I like to do set this apart first is because I want to make sure that this hair can cover like cover up any of that hole right here. I don't want to create any holes. So I know I can over direct this this way just to cover up that hole right there. So there will be no holes. Okay. So I'll go as far as section this out of his hair, out of his face, just for client comfort. So it's not dangling in his head. All right. I'm going to evenly saturate here. Make sure it's nice and uh, saturated. Not like sopping wet, but just, just so where I can, I can cut it. Okay, so now I have this point of my triangle. I'm gonna take another triangle and just kind of push this out of the way. And I'm gonna work with this side of the head, okay? So oftentimes we like to come, come in and uh, bring everything down to the, the baseline. Well, I just created a nice wall on the side of his head. Every, every, all his hair is coming out straight to my comb, parallel to the floor. Well, I wanna continue that wall up into the top of his head. So I'm gonna continue building that square shape through the profile. Okay, so I'm gonna come in. Um, if you wanna come in on this section, I'll take my first section there. I'll push this out of the way. 
And then if you come in from the side profile this way, I'm gonna start to build that wall shape upward still. Now, the reason why I'm not coming in horizontal is because I don't want a whole lot of weight to be hanging around my baseline this time. A lot of our classic shapes, we do want those that weight around that baseline and it really works for us creating those fenders. Well, with this mullet, I kind of, I don't want a lot of weight around the baseline there. So I'm going to come in vertical section. So when I think vertical sections, I'm thinking of reducing weight, right? So I'm going to continue on half inch subsections. Okay. And I'm going to continue on this wall, pull everything up. I'm going to continue on this wall. You can see that hair is coming straight out off the head, parallel to the floor still. Okay. And then I'm just going to connect. Push that down. Same thing. When I'm doing this, I'm using the wide of my teeth. Okay. I don't want a whole lot of tension when I'm doing this because when I'm, if I like stretch this hair out as hard as I can, right? I cut, I cut, it looks good. Once I cut it, it's connected. But once I let go, it, that hair, is, especially when it's wet, it's going to snap back into the head. So now that wall shape is going to start to kind of go like this. And I don't necessarily want that. I just want to build and maintain that wall shape. Okay, so very loose tension. So I could essentially work anywhere I want around the head because my baseline is already set in and I can just connect that hair to the baseline. Okay, so I'll find my baseline here. Work with what I, I can. building this wall shape that I'm creating. Hey, Taylor. Yes, sir. Just wanted to check in with you. We're a little bit past the halfway point. We have Beautiful. viewers from Guatemala, Canada, the US of A, Mexico, Colombia, Hungary, which I haven't seen a Hungary viewer in quite some time, and Vietnam. So. Just want to give right. you the heads up. Lots of people watching from all over the world. That makes that's awesome. Uh, thank you guys for tuning in. Um, that's like amazing that uh, we we work in an industry where like hair cutting hair is just like a universal language, and that I can like be talking to somebody from Guatemala. That's insane. Um, so good to hear. Okay, so I'm continue on that wall shape. So I'm bringing everything out nice and parallel. Okay. And somebody chimed in saying we have viewers from Korea also off of uh, YouTube. <laughs> Welcome Korea. All right. Building that. So I'm, I'm just about the center here. So I'm going to start to work and from my non-dominant side here, so. And I got a question for you there, Taylor. What's up? Someone just asked, how big are your sections? Any tips around the sectioning? Yeah, I mentioned that earlier, um, a half inch subsections. I don't really wanna maybe more like about around my finger. I like to take smaller sections um, just because I find the smaller section, you the more controlled you are. Like I was saying before, if you take like a half inch subsection, you're going to get slight corrugation when you're cutting with shears. And I want to see that slight corrugation because that's what's going to give me texture in, in my shape. When I start to take bigger sections like inch, inch and a half, and I'm trying to rush through the haircut, Maybe I'm getting it done a little faster, but my detailing is going to be a lot, uh, a lot more work. So if I'm taking like inch and a half, I'm going to start to see this kind of corrugation when I'm holding up the hair and that's going to start to create clumpiness and like, that's going to be a lot more detailing in the end. So I like to take about half inch subsections. That's just what I, I normally say. So about half inch subsections. Okay. So I'm going to come in from this side, work my way towards center back. I'm going to make sure my hair is completely saturated. And the same thing, I'm going to build that wall. Got my half inch subsection here. 
I'll push this out of the way. And I'm gonna maintain that nice square wall shape. And you can see, I have my, my wall. I'm gonna continue that upwards into that transition to the top. I think I missed a hair. Let's grab that guy real quick. Okay, move to my next section, half inch subsection, push this out of the way, working in clean environments. Um, the smaller the sections, the cleaner the sections, you know, um, the stronger of a shape you're gonna get. And that's why I really love that hair tonic because it really does give me a nice cutting lotion. Continue on that. Okay. And I'm just going to pivot around to center back. <clears throat> and continue that wall upwards. Okay. And remember, we're not using a whole lot of tension here. I'm working with the wide part of my teeth. I'm not coming in with the fine of my teeth because I don't want to pull this hair too hard because I don't want it to snap it back. I want to keep the integrity of that shape. So bring that all the way through. Okay, I got a couple more sections in the back here. And I love that we're maintaining like all this hair is coming out to like this, this wall shape. So it's gonna give me some like some length to play with on top and creating some texture in the styling. And that's gonna be a lot of fun. Okay, so continue that wall shape up. I got like one more section here. And I'll just connect that to my baseline there. Awesome. I see a little piece of hair here. I'll, can, I'll get that real quick. All right. So now I've said in that sketch, got a lot of, got a lot of texture, a lot of length to work with and play with in through here. You can see a lot of that weights taken out at the interior, but he's still got that length at the bottom because that hair is kind of falling like this. He's got all that hair down here. All right. So now I'm going to connect that triangle to the top of the head. So I'll take this off. And I'm gonna pull, I'm gonna split this triangle up just a tad. And I'm gonna pull all this, over direct all this hair over here. And I'm, I still wanna maintain, you know, I want this hair to come directly off like that, okay? So I'm gonna elevate it some. Now, if I wanted to create length, I can have it at zero elevation and create more length, but typically the front is a little shorter in a mullet, right? We wanna keep it just a tad shorter. Still wanna maintain length and something to play with, but I don't want it to be so aggressively long in the front. Okay, so I'm gonna elevate that hair parallel to the floor, it's coming off got the wide of my teeth, and I'm gonna continue on that square shape. Okay, I'll take, I'll just bring all this over here, over direct all this, 
Anytime we're over directing hair, we are creating length. Okay. So again, pulling all this out, it's parallel to the floor. I'm imagining there's a marble resting on it. It's not going to roll off. Okay. So now you can, you can kind of push this back and it's going to like protect this hole right here. Okay. So now I have this side, I'm going to do the exact same thing on the opposite side. Okay. So I'll come over here. And again, I'll kind of break this section up into two. I want to be working with too much hair. I'm making sure that's coming off parallel to the floor. And I'm just going to connect that with my already cut baseline. Continue that all the way through. And then I'm going to bring everything over. And just connect that. So after I'm done with this part, now I just want to establish a nice solid length on top. Okay. So how I'm going to do that is I'm going to come in from this side. I'm coming through the back. Typically, we don't want to be pulling out hair like this in like a traditional classic cut. But with this cut, I kind of want to reduce some of the weight through the crown and kind of maintain this type of angle, but still maintaining a nice square shape on the side. I want to maintain that shape, but I just want to round this, this uh, out through the, the crown here. So I should have a built-in guide. I have my guide right there, and I'm just going to follow this length all the way through the front. And I'm essentially just building all this like a mohawk. I'm taking everything towards the middle. I got a nice little mohawk section going. I'm clumping up everything towards the middle of the head. Okay. And I'm just working that all the way through the front. And then I'll connect this piece. Awesome. So now that I, since I brought everything to that mohawk section, my hair kind of should kind of start laying like this. So I'm just going to pull everything up and just get any in any any inconsistencies I see. I'm not this part I'm not over directing the hair this way. I'm not over directing it this way. I'm just pulling that hair straight up. So I see that guide. I'm just going to connect it and just point cut it. Um so when I'm point cutting it looks really scary. But as I'm point cutting here, I'm closing my blade on the way out. I'm not chomping in on my fingers. So I have my guide. I'm going to come in and then close on the way out. Slow motion. And just point cut that. Just get little notches in there just to create some texture. All right, I'll come in through here. Take some of that weight out. Come in on this side. Take some of that. So you can see how rad this already looks from a profile. He's got this length. He's got some texture that we can like build up in here. It's laying really cool. Um, so now I wanna, there's a couple different things I could use, okay? So now I have my sketch set in, right? There's a couple of different things. Um, I have my surf tonic, which is gonna um, create like a nice matte finish, but kind of enhance the t and texture and without it drying kind of frizzy, it's kind of like a sea salt spray. Um, I think I'm gonna go with this. Or if you're looking for something with maybe um, low shine and something that's gonna dry, not frizzy, you can definitely go with the classic grooming, uh, the grooming tonic, the spray grooming tonic or even the regular grooming tonic. So maybe I would go with this, somebody with thicker hair, because this has argon oil in it, and this does not have argon oil in it. So this is an option. Another option I can do as a foundation product is the clay spray. And the clay spray is really cool because it really gives it that grittiness to it. Um, it really enhances the texture, but also leaves a really beautiful matte finish because it has kaolin in it. 
and it really absorbs up all those oils. I don't want to use too much of this, maybe like three sprays at most, really work it in there. Um, and it's going to leave it a really nice finish. Okay. Um, <clears throat> I have really curly hair and really textured hair. So I've even messed around with all of our tubes. You know, I, I, when it's, I'll towel dry it, I'll throw some of this, uh, some of these in there. If I want maybe a low shine, medium hold, I can go in with something like this, you know, because people with curly hair or textured hair, after you wash it, it's the worst, you know, it just like, it, you get really fro -y. You need a little something in there to tame it down. So if I wanted a lotion, I can go with the fiber cream. Um, if I wanted a no shine and a medium hold, I can go with the matte styling paste. Or if I didn't want a whole lot of hold, I just wanted something light, just something to let it dry nice, something I could still run my fingers through. Um, I like to call this my no product product, which is the grooming cream, which has a low shine to it. But today, I really, I'm gonna focus in on the spray tonic, the surf tonic. I'm gonna really saturate that hair in there. Really work it through. Hey, Taylor. From What's up? Uh, I have a question for you once you get into your uh, blow drying. Okay. That question is, for mullets, to give movement for those that have thick hair, what would you do to uh, thin it out and use thinning slash notching shears? Um, especially somebody with thick hair. Uh, I think this technique with creating a nice square shape and really reducing that weight in through here is really going to help. Um, after I'm done with the blow dry, you, I'll go through each of my sections that I do and just kind of go in with my blending shears and just kind of notch it out, uh, thin out maybe. So this is my hair shaft, <laughs> my finger, and I'll probably take it to about here and uh, just kind of notch in and just create some texture through there. But I think just this this uh, shape alone and creating that nice square shape is going to reduce a lot of that heaviness that you might get with heavier textured hair. Okay, so I'm coming in with the matte styling paste, just a little bit, just to give a little more grit on top of that surf tonic. And I'm going to blow dry that into the hair. And I don't want to blow it out like nice and straight. I, want, I really want to enhance his texture and through and through his hair because he's got really beautiful texture okay so i'm gonna get to the blow dry here um let me grab a towel real quick while taylor gets ready to blow dry his patron let us know what products you like to use when you're working on your mullets at home now when enhancing texture I really like to put it on medium uh, strength, high heat. Um, I find that like when you're like scrunching in the hair, the slower you cook it, the better it's gonna turn out. So if I just kind of blasted it, that hair is gonna go, I really wanna keep it at a lower, lower strength just so I can really control that hair. And I'm just gonna scrunch this in the hair I'm gonna lay that down a little nice because I'm gonna taper that in just a tad. You can play with some of this hair in through here. I want this to kind of have some lift. And keep in mind how the hair dries is how it's gonna stay. So I wanna maintain that curliness, but I'm gonna put some lift on it with my fingers and let that hair dry straight up. So I just want this to sit straight up. Okay. You can see that I'm just kind of scrunching it in. I'm just kind of letting this hair do what it's what it wants to do. I'm not forcing it a certain way. 
but you can see that shape. It's really beautiful. And now I want to just kind of take this in just a tad, right? I want to take that, that sideburn area just to really make that mullet pop. I think this actually looks pretty cool, kind of wispy, um, but I want to take that in just a tad. So what I'm going to do is I'll come in with my clippers and when I'm tapering the side, keep in mind, I don't want to disrupt my baseline that I just created, right? So I'm going to come in at an angle at a, um, a 45. I don't want to be coming in at this angle and come straight up. I want to be coming at this angle and I'm just going to hug this in just a little tighter. All the way up until that baseline. I'm not going to disrupt that baseline there. Okay, so I could even have my, I have my clipper open. So I'm going to do a freehand little taper here and just kind of see scoop that out. Some of that weight could come in like this, kind of reduce some of that. But keep in mind, any detailing that we do now, we don't want to disrupt our shape and we don't want to like take it in to our baseline. So I'm going to keep these little wispies through here. But what I am going to do is I'm going to outline around his ear just to look a little cleaner. So I'll have you tilt your head. And just kind of take that in. Just around the ear. So now he's looking business in the front and party in the back. Let's go. <laughs> I'm going to do the same thing on this side. Not, don't want to disrupt that, that baseline. Working all the way up until that baseline. There's my baseline. Keep that in there. Take this a little tighter. I got my comb out of 45 just to create some little elevation there. Really take that in just a little tighter. I'll do a little freehand taper. Okay. And then I'm going to come in with my outliners. Now he's got a little, looks nice and clean around there. It's tapered in just a tad. Okay. Now I want to just kind of do some detailing, right? Um, especially with this like bottom part here. I'm gonna have you tilt your head all the way down. We have all this hair that we can play with. Now I can come in with my blending shears or I could come in with my feather razor, which I really like to work with my feather razor and kind of play with this hairline and kind of give it some separation. Like I can see where like the hair is clumping up. So I'm going to come in between these little pieces and just kind of get some separation in there. You can see that kind of start to take place. Get a little bit of that. I see a little wing here. I'm going to take a little bit of weight out and through here. Just to create a little texture and some separation at that bottom. One thing that I really love to do with especially a mullet shape, and this has really helped me like create some separation at the bottom, is I'll come in and almost give him an undercut. I'm not going to go super aggressive, but I'm going to take all this hair up, all this hair up, right? And I'm going to clean this up. And just so when that hair hangs over, you can see it really nicely. Take all, push all this hair up. And almost give them like an undercut almost. So that when this hair hangs over, you know, you can really see through it and really see that texture. And I found that with these kind of shapes, that's really helped me in the long run, really like defining this hairline. And this is probably like the funnest part for me, like just like maintaining, just creating a little kind of notch it through, come in at a 45 and just kind of get, get some separation in there. Okay, so I'll come in, 
come into that wall that I created on the side, right? I got my blending shears. My blending shears, these are um, wider teeth. You know, if I'm going to do like a tighter fade, I would probably come in with like some tighter teeth. But I'm going to come in with my uh, wider teeth and just kind of create, break it up without messing up my shape. I'm just really going to point cut. And that's really going to reduce the weight for somebody with thick hair. Um, that we were t that that question earlier. So I'm just coming in with all the sections that I took and really just reducing some of that weight in through there. Okay, come in through the side, reduce some of that weight. And just start to build some texture in through that way. I'll get my next section. So I'm just coming in with all the sections that I previously just cut and just kind of breaking it up a little bit especially through the back because I want this to pop really nicely. Okay, and then I'll do a little bit on the top. Bring all this hair up. Now, because I sprayed that serp tonic in, it's a light hold, and I'm still able to get a comb through it. So it's nothing heavy. You can still you can still do some finish cutting after that. And then I'll come in through the side, and I'll just kind of texture that. Up. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> With the, with the texturizing part, you really just want to follow the shape that you already cut the same way you cut it. You can see that he's got some cool length here. It's got a little bit of, I'm going to lighten this up just a tad. It's a little lighter. For him. And I'm just going to dust him off here. One straight that I think I missed here. Went in doubt, cut it out. All right, so I blow dried in the surf tonic. I put a little bit of the matte tex uh, texture paste in there. I'm gonna add a little more matte styling paste just to enhance that that texture, just to give it a little more definition. Took about that size. Really emulsifying it in my hands so there's no clumps, right? And I'm just gonna really work that in there. Maybe separate some of the pieciness down here. And you can see a pro that profile, that mullet just popping off. And it's still a nice square masculine shape. All right, is there any questions before I, I do it? This is the finished product. No questions, lots of praise. Looks amazing, love the shape. Thorough, great explanations. Great work, Taylor from Patrick Butler. Bunch of bunch of people loving it. Great job. Awesome. And thank you guys well, for if, uh, tuning in with us. For sure. If there are no questions for Taylor, we're going to officially sign off here. Thank you so much for hanging out with us today at the Rusal Live. Before I sign off, I do want to talk about our newest products that just launched. We released Rusal Tat Tattoo Advanced Treatment Line. Put up the link there on the page so you can go check that out. We've got four new products, the Buff Exfoliating Wash, Hydro Balm, a Vivid Gel, and the Rusal Shine Spray. Reach out to your local distributors and ask them about Rusal Tat. Once again, thank you so much for tuning in. Next week, we will have 
Yona from the Old School Barber Academy presenting. So be sure to check that out. We'll see you next week. Thanks for watching.